This is why you get all of the all of the progressives. They never say this anymore, but white people have no culture. They used to say this all the time. Now, this is just such an obvious nonsense statement because, A, there's no such thing as... I, like, who who is the straw man that they all wish they were debating? Who, who has ever said that? I mean, we say that, like... Uh, white race white people as it is was invented and the concept of race is is certainly well, like but i've never heard anyone say that white people have no culture like that seems like such a straight white people all you white people none of you have any cultural significance there's been no contribution by any white person to the arts as long as i've known anyways let's talk about shit that matters Okay, so I'm going to quickly read out the Intercept's uh, really good article on this. The largest civil disobedience yet against the new pipeline construction in Minnesota was met by a furious response and a cloud of debris. Debris? Debris. Uh, a Department of Homeland Security patrol helicopter descended on the protest against the Enbridge Line 3 tar sands pipeline, kicking up dust and showering demonstrators with sand in an unusual attempt to disperse the crowd. I couldn't see because it got in my eyes. After it pulled up, there was a lot of people who were ducking, who were in the fetal position just because they didn't know what was going to happen, and they were here to protect themselves from the sand. I'm going to show you the footage of that right now. So outside of being cruel, petty, gotta, and just generally a huge waste or... of resources and time, uh, you're also directly combating people's First Amendment rights to peaceful protest. Pipeline opponents who identify as water protectors say the point of the helicopter's activity seem to be used to try to use dust to intimidate and scatter the crowd. Big Wind said they heard no dispersal order coming from the helicopter. I perceive this to be a tactic they utilized to deter people from arriving in large masses. That's not safe. Authorities later claimed that the helicopter was being used to make an announcement for demonstrators to disperse, but the announcement was inaudible due to the demonstration participants. Uh, I, I don't know. I understand that 100% uh, it's hard to ascertain what is happening from this quick clip, but uh, I mean, on the surface, I, I don't hear an announcement. Uh, did, did anyone hear? I, I could not hear them saying anything. And if that was the case, it seemed a lot more like he was just there to try and, you know, dust out the protesters. There's rumors that it was saying something, but I couldn't hear anything about us. To those of us who controlled the ground, it felt like a scary encounter. It was not an easy, uh, it was not a way to easily send a message. Hours later, police, according to the witnesses, used a sound amplification device called a long range acoustic device or LRAD at the site to make announcements, raising questions about why the helicopter was necessary at all. Uh, I completely agree with that one. Like, it, if if you were going to be using what would be the typical way of making announcements, as in you have to leave the area or the land, then you can do that. I mean, you, you have megaphones, you have speakers, you, you have everything available to you. You don't need to do it via helicopter. Uh, that just seems incredibly uh, counterintuitive, right? Like, the helicopter, by its very nature, is going to make a whole bunch of noise, and then you're not going to be able to just sit there and be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, this is, this is what's happening. Starlight Reverie, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, there was over a thousand people at these uh, action protests. The anti-pipeline protests are in response to the plans from the Canadian Enbridge firm, uh, sorry, en energy firm Enbridge to ramp up construction of a springtime hiatus lift. Enbridge is preparing to drill under northern Minnesota rivers that are central to the lifeways of the local Ojibwe people and are protected treaties between the tribes and the federal government. <laughs> protected treaties. <laughs> <laughs> Pipeline opponents have for weeks asserted that the weekend's treaty people gathering would draw more than 1,000 people in northern Minnesota to fight the Tar Sands Pipeline. On Monday morning, according to a press release, more than 500 people occupied a pipe pump station north of Park Rapids, Minnesota, blocking the entrance of the site and locking down the equipment. Now, 
I can hear what you're saying. Hey, regular, regular mole rat dragon. Thank you. Appreciate that. I can hear what all of you are saying already. Okay, Lance, uh, you are uh, supposedly uh, for environmentalism. Uh, you don't want global warming to keep happening. You're, you're, you're pro pro environmental policies. Don't you understand that pipelines, by their nature, are less wasteful, less impactful than say trains or trucks? To which I would respond with, that is true. I'm not battling that. What I am probably going to propose is that most pipelines historically have given the energy companies uh, free reign to exert way more pipe and transport uh, than they would have otherwise. They don't normally use it to suddenly transport the same amount of oil that they were doing, or crude uh, oil in this case, that they were using before. They're oftentimes the prerequisite to be able to export vast quantities of uh, fuel and, and surplus. They also have a very big problem of exploding. Uh, there's there's numerous problems with pipelines suddenly exploding and us not knowing how to stop them. That's not, us not knowing how to prevent them from continuing to spray and spew all this sludge over the environment while they're doing that. I mean, I'm sure everyone here remembers the BP oil spill, which was underground for so long. And what what was our strategy back then? Hey, thank you, Moroccan uh, Moroccan uh, Ben Ayath. I appreciate it. Um, the BP oil spill. One of the strategies was let's shoot garbage at it. That, that was actually one of the strategies that we employed. It was like, oh well, this this doesn't seem to be able to stop. There's just too much pressure. Why, why don't we try firing garbage at it? Because because that'll block it up. You know, that'll be that'll be great. There's uh, there's also no question that human beings need energy in society in order to do the things we do. I'm currently talking to you via the good fortune of having energy transported into the wiring of my house, which powers this computer, which then sends the signals out into the ether. And then all of you are using your Elon Musk uh, fiber optics uh, in order to get me into your brains. I understand this is all a necessary thing. Um, one of the things I would propose is that there are other alternative ways of generating energy, as in the case of British Columbia, we get most of our energy from hydroelectricity. The second being is that we have a surplus right now of oil. Uh, there was a problem at the start of the COVID in which we had so much oil, uh, but not as much consumption because everyone's transports, uh, you know, planes, trains, trucks, everything that was requiring uh, crude uh, refinement was suddenly not being utilized as much, so the price of the oil barrels started to plummet. That is in large part as well uh, because of the OPEX uh, monopolization over the industry, but it also got to a point where the crude barrel oil value, I believe, for the first time was hitting a negative, which is a bit unusual. Apparently the left love BlackRock now. BlackRock is pursuing an investment strategy that will make it harder for young Americans to own homes. The left will ignore this because BlackRock is committed to racial audits and other diversity BS. What the fuck? Who's J.D. Vance? Christian husband, dad, author of Hillbilly Elegy. Ah, okay. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the the left love it. That's that's the thing. Yeah. Um, I want to have a good alternative to Mike, but man, Lance, you are not on point with stuff. I agree. Pipelines are more safe than trains, and being navally pro nuke. What the fuck was the bow shit that was lame? You're all over the park. Uh, sorry, all over the park here. People park forever. Um, so, I mean, I'd have to address a few of these. One, uh, being pro-nuclear energy is not the same as being pro-nukes. Uh, I am for the disarmament of all nuclear weapons. Being pro-nuclear energy is because we live in a time when right now our carbon output uh, is 50% higher than it was in pre-industrial levels. And so, yes, I'm looking for all and any methods at saving humanity, and I want to work towards that. One of those is nuclear power. I understand that nuclear power has a huge amount of waste that it produces, nuclear waste, which has a long uh, shelf life. It's, uh, what is it, the radioactive fallout life of, of nuclear waste is, is very, very long. As of now, our strategy of burying it underground is not exactly what I consider adequate. Um, however, it is certainly an alternative to our current trajectory, which is to extract all of the oil from every square inch of earth that we can, blasting apart shale rocks, uh, doing fracking, uh, everything we can in order to continue to uh, take out more energy when there are other ways of uh, creating energy, such as nuclear power, that has much lower CO2 output. That's that's one of the reasons. There's also, there's a lot of alternatives to using simply radioactive, like thorium, yes, I, I'm very pro-thorium, don't get me wrong, although the idea of us catching up in the science necessary to make that a reality it doesn't seem to be within like our grasp in the short term. So yeah, I, I am pro nuclear power. I'm not pro nuclear power uh, in the sense that like I think it is a wasteless exercise. I'm pro nuclear power in the sense that I think it needs to be added to our arsenal. There's many things that we have to do in terms of like you know trying to prevent uh, a climate catastrophe. 
That's that's one of the problems. The waste gets buried on indigenous land. It can, yes, and that is a, a very horrible and bad thing. I'm not advocating for that. It's it's. It, I think it's one of these things right now where like you're trying to like label me guilt by omission. Like if you say you want this, well, surely you want that. No, I don't. Like in what way would I ever want to advocate for people burying nuclear waste exclusively on the indigenous land? Like uh, if if it's your first time here, I'm very very pro indigenous rights. You know, I, and our nuclear pants are unbelievably outdated. That's another big problem. Yeah, of course. Anyways, when it comes to this, oh, I wanted to see this very quickly. Uh, Lotus Eaters has a new segment called Why the Left Fetishizes, Fetishizes Native Culture. I figured that would be appropriate. It's important to remember about progressives in particular, uh, when it comes to their fetishization of native cultures, is that this fetishization is entirely aesthetic. They view it as a kind of, oh, look at the precious native culture. The, their, their ways must be preserved from us evil, imperialistic, materialistic capitalists, right? Because they themselves have no idea or love of the kind of um, aesthetic, uh, the, and, w and when, I, when I say this, we're talking about the sort of, you know, moral and artistic and the, the way the things are in a human sense. Uh, they've got no sense of that for their own culture because it's been beaten out of them by a hundred years of pure materialism and you know anti-religious sentiment and things like this. So any anything that is supposed to be artistic and appreciated about our own culture is eroded. This is why you get all of the all of the progressives. They never say this anymore, but white people have no culture. They used to say this all the time. Now this is just such an obvious nonsense statement because A, there's no such thing as I like who who is the straw man that they all wish they were debating? Who who has ever said that? I mean we say that like uh white race white people as it is was invented and the concept of race is is certainly well, like but i've never heard anyone say that white people have no culture like that seems like such a straight white people all you white people none of you have any cultural significance there's been no contribution by any white person to the arts as long as i've known humans without a culture there's no such thing uh, but they they were conditioned to have it beaten out of them that any of these things are particular to Western European culture, right? And, and in fact, more specifically, the individual nations of Western Europe. Uh, and so if they view these things as not particular to us, then they think, oh, they must be universal to everyone. And this is another point about the progressives. They, oh, these are universal values. No, not really. Then I say it's a trigger sergeant. What up, Zots? Hey, everyone, go to twitch.tv slash camzots underscore alter. Give him a follow back. He's doing, the, doing a lot of great things in the leftosphere definitely not universally held they claim as a constituency all people on earth but most people on earth don't ascribe to them um and so they they have no conception of what western particularism is like and so when they see local particularism in say india reza aslan goes down there oh yeah i will eat that human brain thanks and this is your your delicate did you not see this no, I, I remember you talking yeah. about it yeah he, he, he unironically <laughs> ate so why uh, this always goes down the racist rabbit hole when it comes to uh, Sargon of Akkad is his, and I'll say this, outright fetishization of Western culture. And this idea that every other culture is, by definition, bar like barbaric uh, when, when it comes to, say, like, uh, like, I don't know how many people associate Indian culture with eating brains. I mean, yes, there was Indiana Jones 2, which kind of, I guess, forever solidified that stereotype, as in Indians just love eating monkey brains, and that's what we should know them for. Oh, and also ripping hearts out of living humans. There's that as well. Kalima, Kalima, right? But outside of that, like, do, does anyone besides these two ever associate? Like, and you are doing that right now. He's like, he's literally being like, well, people want to like, you know, consider that there's some kind of intrinsic beauty uh, to Indian culture. Whereas if you ask me, it's really just about eating the monkey brains. Human brain, because some lunatic in India was doing it. So yeah, but it's this precious native native culture. It's his religion. It's all this, who cares? You're eating a human brain, right? <laughs> but but they, they can, but what they can do is create that kind of aesthetic bubble where they say, right, the, the rules, uh, like any piece of art is, uh, any anything aesthetic creates its own rules. It creates kind of a little pocket universe in our own heads, right? Where the rules are different. So you, you understand like the, the concept of universes in science fiction. Right, so the Star Wars universe, the Star, Star Trek universe—they've got different rules. They are, they operate on different themes and different logic, and you recognize one from the other. And that's what they're doing with these native cultures, but they refuse to do it with our own culture. You know, because we have that sort of aesthetic value for British culture and British. Those are make believe. Those are about samurai wizards in space, with with, with sword lasers. It's not. 
it, it's it's not it's not real. N none of it's real. They're they're samurai wizards with laser swords. Standards, and so we've got no. You've got you've got to uphold the standards. You've got to do certain things. So you go to the tea room. You you drink the tea. You eat eat the um, scone with the jam and cream on it, and that's what you do when you're in England because that's the the correct thing to do in England. Mm. Uh, and so Razor Aslan takes that mentality. What he he doesn't apply. Like it's it's kind of like okay. So if I was to think of like Spanish culture, all right. So I happen to be uh, part Catalonian. I have a lot of Catalonian family and I want to talk about Spanish culture. If I was to concentrate strictly on the Inquisition, for example, it would sound like I was being super, super fucked up in my characterization of all Spanish culture. If I was like, well, you know, uh, the Spaniards, they really love cock and ball torture. Like they really love it. They, they really love, you know, putting a little cage with a rat inside it and holding a candlestick up to the rat so that the rat has to bury itself inside a human, thereby killing the human in the most grotesque way possible. That's that's the Spaniards. All right. That's that's just Spanish culture. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to say other than they're savages. They're just outright savages. You know, apply it here, but he does apply it in India to eat a human brain. And that's what all the progressives fetishizing uh, native cultures that otherwise, if they were being done and uh, recommended by any of the people over here, they'd probably be strung up and tarred and feathered, you know, if we. <laughs> but I love how when he's talking about like British culture, it's like, well, you know, we, we just love tea and jam and crumpets. And that's that's British culture at the end of the day. I mean, you have yourself a little bit of jam, a little bit of a crumpet, you know. You might uh, you might flog your relative, and then uh, you know you might have a British monarchy for thousands of years that involves the rape, torture, and enslavement of numerous peoples. And then, oh, don't get me started on on the uh, the Indians and, and what we did to those savages. We we certainly did colonize them. Oh yes, we colonized them quite goodly. But all I'm saying is that this is this is not indicative of British culture. No, British culture is lovely. It's it's tea, jam, and crumpets. We should rightfully. Eat. I mean, this is the best thing yes. about being British is we have a nice history of going over there, finding someone burning, tarring a feather. Them, yeah. but, well, no, burning his uh, his his woman with him when he dies, yeah. and being like, right, anyone who does that's getting hung. Yeah, Simple I mean, as. that's literally what we did in India. Yeah, um, and and. <laughs> God, <really. laughs> Why does this keep happening? Why does this, this that was a bit I, I, that always happens. I do a bit and then you do the bit in real time. Holy fuck. How does this keep happening? That's literally what we did in India. He knows what you know other things we found in Africa that we had to stamp out. Um, but the, oh but that's the God. point. You know, we we didn't say, oh well, if it's your precious. We found thing. things in Africa that we had to stamp out. Are you fucking kidding me? Holy fuck, dude! This is supposed to be the lighter side of Sargon, by the way. This is Diet Sargon, okay? This is Lotus Eaters. He's 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 not as political. He's he's toned things down. They're more palatable. He wants to be a friendly brand. He wants to be able to be back allowed on Twitter. Yeah, he's he's definitely skirted the TOS there. Now he's got a Lotus Eaters account that he still uses to like slag on people. But holy shit! The, the lighter side of Sargon. Still, still incredibly, incredibly racist native aesthetic oh. culture they burn their wives like, alive yeah exactly yeah. No, no no that's genuine no, human suffering and we're here to stop by, that by the rope until dead yeah that's exactly the rule. this is the you enslaved millions of human beings like holy shit do, do we want to go tit for tat with all the horrors and atrocities of the british empire civilization of the world is civilizing of the world uh, and th this is why the progressives are actually no help at all to any native cultures anyway I mean, by the way this goes from the top on down okay this this is like you know this is the same rhetoric that has been pushed by tucker carlson over in america whenever you hear things like oh yes uh, the civilized west conquering of course the uncivilized browns and indians and all that kind of stuff yes that that is exactly what they're talking about okay that western like this is all coded for white supremacy that's it always has been you see how ignorant yankee it is as well yeah like white culture is american and then that's yeah. english that you don't know anything yeah like but that's that's the that's the sort of moral impetus behind it all and it's bad frankly it's it's hypocritical and it's bad for the people who they think that they're helping because they are pre preserving a native culture but like 
But at the end of the day, they have to understand, the only way to go forward is to remove the Indian from within, you know? We had these programs in Canada, they were quite effective, these residential schools. We effectively tried to eliminate all the uh, barbaric behavior of the children, and, and yes, that's, that's basically the best thing the West can do, is to civilize all these uncivilized people. They're also allowing that native culture to continue to victimize the people within it. Mm. And there are going to be many people in that culture who don't hold the power in the, you know, the, the hierarchy of the culture, who probably would actually not like to get sacrificed to the volcano god or mm. burned alive because their husband died or things like that. And, and these, if you care about human rights, should be more than enough of a motivation for you to say, look, okay, I don't want to take away your native culture. I mean, anyone who is a direct uh, descendant of Aztecs or Aztec culture that's still alive today, uh, I, I'm going to go on a limb here because I've done absolutely no research on this topic. Pretty sure, pretty sure they're not demanding human sacrifice. Pre pretty sure they're not still like, well, we have to, we have to honor our culture, you know, so we have to, we have to sacrifice some humans now. Any, any more than nowadays Sargon of Akkad is involved in torturing and enslaving individuals. Actually, whoa. <laughs> um, spoke too soon. Let's, let's not say things you can't take back. Huh. All right. Well, good to know. Anyways, one final thought on all this is, I've said this before, if you haven't looked it up, go check out the National Geographic article on Indigenous cultures and the preservation of biodiversity. Turns out between the about 5% of uh, Indigenous peoples who still exist on Earth, uh, they're responsible for 80%, 80% of the world's biodiversity being saved. 80%. Like, unbelievable. If it was not for indigenous people in Brazil, indigenous guerrilla fighters literally dying to be able to preserve the Brazilian rainforests, uh, they would be utterly devastated right now. So that is that is a huge debt, an incredible debt we owe to indigenous freedom fighters in those kind of areas. Because like, you know, I, I say this so, so often, like, I, I'm unbelievably soft, all right? I'm, I'm a, a clown who tries to entertain people and inform them on the internet. Uh, they are on the front lines dying, dying for this shit. So, you know, if you, if you can in any way, please support them. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing, you know, that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives? Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like, just, just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just, it's not a great company. But hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, Xander Corvus and VK Jehannam, we are prepared to commit human sacrifices for your eternal glory. To our monarchs, the Tim Caucus and Tom Spiker, we are humbled to be your oafish jesters, clowning around in your royal court. To our lords, Evan Nudie, Toe Fox, Ryan Lubin, Trevor R., Jeff Lamb, and Alexander Thaler, we shall proudly carry your standard onto the battlefield and die for your precious land. To our esteemed Knights of the Round Table, Dark Puppy, Jenna Tal, Anna Loves Riley, Quiet185, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Trevor Janice, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Chronic to Hemphog, The Great Poudini, Bone Genie, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramona Costa, J. Fraser Cartwright, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Yopi, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our glass, we raise our swords, and we salute you.